Go. New shirt, new workout shirt. How you feel? How you feel? How you feel? This happened just last week. Right. I was traveling back home after visiting some family for a few days. Okay. I lived about six hours away and had to drive through three different states to get back home. All right. I left at about 9 a.m. and figured to get home at about 4 or 5. About an hour into the drive, I realized I was almost out of gas, so I stopped to fill up. As I did, I noticed a white car with a red stripe. Total in. About an hour in, you realize you was almost out of gas? Either! You got a car that's horrible on gas. You don't got a Toyota. That's that's you, you know what I mean. That's out the that's out the yeah. Cause I see I I sent some clutchiness already going on in the first couple of seconds. Or you just didn't pay attention to how much gas was in your like. But anytime you 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 know you anytime you know you driving for hours, always make sure you fill up on. Gas, please, and, and I mean, we really about it. Have a full tank of gas, right? And then have a little, little gas tank, little thing, jug, whatever. That when you about to run out, you can go ahead and put some more in that mother quack. That's all I'm saying. But right now, you clucking up. You are. In the middle of it, getting gas as well. When I was done, I left and went on with the drive. A while later, I noticed that the white and red car was right behind me. This wasn't a big deal at all, and as I went on with the drive, I was occasionally seeing it. I had to change roads a couple times, and the car remained behind me. Nah. It was starting to drive directly behind me constant. Nah. 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 If you get over, right, and a car gets over, that should raise some sort of red flag. I'm not saying that if you get over, anybody, if you drive in, you get over, and the person behind you gets over, I'm not saying that's an immediate red flag. And I'm not saying that you're in a clucked up situation. But if you get over again and that same car behind you get over, get the hell out of there. You speed the hell up. That's all I'm saying. When I would switch lanes, the car would immediately switch lanes as well. Wow. I looked to try to see who was driving. Whoever it was appeared to be wearing sunglasses and a hat, so I couldn't really tell, but it looked like a man. Sunglasses? After I got about an hour from home, but it's the night. car had still been following me almost the entire time, I think it's and it was night. starting to concern me. I decided to stop at the next exit there was to see if the car would stop as well. There was a rest stop, and I took the exit for it. That dark-ass rest... Did, the car continued to follow me and took the exit as well. Wow! I wasn't sure who it was or what they wanted. I didn't think I had cut them off or anything like that. I told myself it was probably just a coincidence. So I parked at the rest stop and the car parked about five spots away. At this point, you just gotta settle it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta put the deuces up. You gotta put the ones up. Show them one. You gotta, you know, face it. You know. Come on, let's go. What's up? What's good? Like, what's up? You gotta put the ones out, like, be ready to go right now. You see that person? You get out. Y'all both get out. Put the ones up. Go at it. Go at it. Because ain't no reason. Ain't you no know this. First of all, this is a dark ass rest area. It sucks. But ain't no reason. You get over in the lane, the person behind you getting over. Every time you move, they move. You get off the exit, they get off the exit. What? At that, you just gotta put the deuces up. Because obviously you don't have Adidas on. 
right? I knew that off but. But put the ones up, get ready, and go at it. Corvette, Corvette, hop into my jet like that. When you run like that, when you turn like that, when you walk like that. I'm not really much of a fighter, though. I'm not really much of a fighter, though. I'm not really much of a fighter, though. You know, even though it looks like I can fight, I, I, like, I, I can't, I, I've never been in a fight before, ever. Ever, ever. I, I, but I should probably take some self-defending or defensive class. You know, I should probably take up boxing or something. But there we go. Okay, I'm getting off topic. I'm getting off topic. Sorry. I waited to see if the driver would get out, but they didn't. After a little while, I decided to just leave. But as soon as I did, the car left as well. Wow. When I was leaving the parking lot to go back onto the freeway, the car got so close to me for a second I thought it might bump me. I kept driving until I got to the exit to where I lived was. At this point. I knew I was being followed, and I didn't want to go home, so I thought of the idea of going to the police station. I drove to my city and got to the police station about 10 minutes from my house. As I pulled in, the car also did. I sat in the parking lot of the police station, and the car parked about 10 spots away. After being there less than a minute, the car drove away. When it did, I got the idea to look at its license plate, but it was too late and I couldn't get a decent view of it. I waited in the parking lot for 10 more minutes before I finally left to go home. I looked behind me almost the whole time I was driving to make sure I wasn't being followed, and thankfully I wasn't. You sure? I finally got home and got inside. I thought at that point I would never see the car again, but I was wrong. Oh, see. I woke up in the middle of the night for seemingly no reason. I didn't hear any noise or anything. I was wide awake though, so I just took a glance out my window. Nothing was there. Then about 10 seconds later, I saw a car pull onto my usually quiet street. It was the same car that had been following me before. I knew it was the same car because of the red stripe it had, which is fairly uncommon. The car drove very slowly down my street. As it got to my house, I ducked down and hoped it wouldn't stop. It kept going and drove away past the end of my street and onto another one. I wasn't able to fall asleep for another hour. This was just last week. And I'm hoping the car doesn't come back. I'm pretty sure that that the person knows where you live. Because why would that person just be just be in your neighborhood? That's not a coincidence. That's not, that's not random. Out of all neighborhoods, he chose he chooses yours. He out for you. So watch your back at all hours. At all hours. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Ugh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, something came up. Oh. <laughs> Five years ago, I worked in the city about 30 minutes from my house. Right. I would make the drive to work every day on a highway for a good part of it. 30 minutes? Damn. But one day, they decided to shut down a portion of the highway and repave part of it. So I would have to take some back roads to get to and from work for about a month. This was kind of annoying because it would take me an extra almost 10 minutes to get to work every day. Damn. One night, I was driving home from work, and it was about 11 p.m., a lot later than I usually worked. The roads were pretty empty, though, so that was nice. I got to one of the back roads I would take, which had a bunch of thick woods on both sides of it. I would drive on this road for about a mile, but as soon as I turned onto it, I saw a car speeding up behind me. They were going much faster than me, and even though it was a one-lane road going each way, I figured they were going to go into the opposite traffic lane to pass me. I moved over a bit, but as they came to pass me, they stopped at my same speed and rolled down their window. Hell no! Nah! I looked over and saw two men sitting in the front seats. They were waving their arms at me. I rolled down my window and heard them yell at me that my tire was flat. It took me a few seconds to understand what they were saying. Finally, I got it, and I pulled my car to the side of the road. It was strange because nothing felt off about my car. I came to a stop, and so did the man a short ways in front of me. Oh, oh, no. Nope. I would have said, in that situation, I would have said, hey, 
Your tire is flat. It's flat. Then I would just, I would just kept driving. They bought that cluck shit though. I got out and began to look at all of my tires. The front ones were definitely not flat, so I walked to the back. As I did, I heard the men approaching. I looked closely at both tires, but neither of them were flat at all. I was confused. I walked back to the front of my car where one of the men was standing, blocking my driver's side door. Jesus. He also appeared to be looking at my gauges inside my car. I said to the men that my tires were not flat. The other man who was standing in front of my car said to me he had to show me what was wrong and asked me to follow him. He started to walk to the back of my car. This whole thing was starting to seem really sketchy to me at this point. It started to seem sketchy? It started to seem sketchy. For me, it started to seem sketchy the moment this story started. I really didn't like the other man standing in front of my door like that. I started to walk to the back of the car, curious of what the man was going to say. I was almost there when I heard a lot of rustling in the woods. I looked expecting to see an animal, but saw two men emerging in masks. Oh, so now it's four of them. I ran back towards my driver's door and saw the man now standing there with a smile on his face and his arms out as if he was going to block me from entering my car entirely. I felt like I had been set up. I took two quick steps and then shoved the man as hard as I could. We were roughly the same size, and he went back and nearly fell over. It seemed like he wasn't expecting it at all. I took this chance to jump into my car and lock the doors immediately. Of course, the second after I did that, multiple doors tried to be opened by the men. I started the engine and put the car into drive. The man I had shoved attempted to stand in front of my car to block me from driving away. I had to drive slightly off the road. Well, I'm glad you made a decision in that split second because for me, you try to block me in my in this clutch situation. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna run you over by accident. And then got back onto the road to avoid hitting the man. Then I sped away. I figured the men would try to chase me, but they didn't. Once I got off of that road. I slowed down and made sure I wasn't being followed, then called the police. I don't know what the intentions of those men were. Maybe it was to try to rob me, but either way, it was a scary situation. Oh. Excuse me. I just ate before I started this reaction. Oh, I'm so full. This happened in Northwest Florida. Right. It was in April of 2013 and a Sunday. My sister and I went to pick up my brother, who was being released from prison. This was when inmates were being released at midnight instead of 7 a.m. Shit. The drive was seven hours from where we lived, so we rented a car and we made it to town safely at 10 p.m. Central Time, which was an hour behind our time zone. My sister had to use the bathroom, so we were riding around in the car trying to locate an open business for her to use the bathroom in. I was driving and pulled up to a red light. I decided to make a left-hand turn, so I got into the left turning lane. As I pulled up to the light, there was a 1990s Ford F-150 in the straight lane. We were the only two vehicles at the light and on the road. The driver was a white male in his late 20s or early 30s. My sister and I looked over at him, but he sat there nervously biting his nails, never acknowledging our presence or looking our way. We thought it was sort of weird, especially being that we pulled up beside him and we were the only two cars out. He either, he bited his nails, acting nervous, not paying y'all no mind. He either just got finished doing some cluck shit, or about to do some cluck shit. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like think about it. Like you just look over, right? You just see somebody, <laughs> like, foo -foo. the light turned green for us both, and he sped off from the light before we could even acknowledge the change of the light. So I proceeded with my left turn, and I began to drive down this long road that seemed endless. My sister and I are attentive, so as we were driving. We noticed lights behind us in our same lane. Wow. We didn't give it much thought because they weren't close enough for us to be too concerned. 
After driving about three miles down the road, my sister and I agreed that this was an old-fashioned town, and everything closes at about 6 p.m. on Sundays in a town like it, so we needed to turn around. Although the decision for us to turn around wasn't sudden to us, it was sudden to the driver speeding behind us in our lane. I decided to make a U-turn at the next opening in the road, causing the driver behind us to take the other lane to keep from hitting us from behind. We looked to see who almost hit us, and it was the same 1990s Ford F-150 that was at the red light with us. The same car that took off before we realized the light was even green. We didn't know how he could have possibly gotten behind us so quickly, because we noticed the lights about 40 seconds after we turned, and we just watched him take off at the green light going straight, and not the direction we had gone. My sister then asked me to just take her to the prison to wait for our brother to be released, so we went to the prison to get our brother. We didn't know who that guy was in the truck. The way everything transpired with him not acknowledging us, biting his nails nervously, and then speeding off as soon as the light changed, was very creepy. I'm just thankful we didn't find out what he possibly had planned. Yeah, that was kind of sus. I'm not even going to hold you. That was sus as shit. But that's none of your business. That's none of my business. That's none of y'all business. That's his business. He need to take care of that. Whatever he got going on. Uh, thank God y'all wasn't involved, though. Y'all was, was about to be involved. But thank God y'all wasn't. Um, but. I just. Whenever I'm driving, I'm, I'm a very conscious, alert driver. I notice a lot of things. Um, like some of the things I notice is like, cause I've been driving for so long, but like some of the things I notice is like when I'm driving, uh, I pay attention to the people that's, that's in my, I guess, immediate circle or like my immediate, uh, area. Um, and I pay attention to like other people's tires sometimes. I also keep my distance. Um, from people too, because, well, hold on. The reason I pay attention to people's tires is because, um, I, I just need to know like what you're going to do. You know, I don't know how to explain it. Like I just, I pay attention to tires. Um, and then I also keep my distance also. Um, uh, for example, if I like. There's been a couple of times where I'm I'm driving and the person in front of me is like kind of swerving a little bit, and if I'm driving behind you, I would either I would either slow down a little bit and get much get and get much more of a greater distance between me and the person in front of me, or I would just speed up, um, and pass that person. Cause either way, I do not want to be involved with 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 what they got going on. Cause why are you swerving in the middle of the street? Why you, no, don't do that. Um, I've been, I've been, I drove one time, I was driving one day and okay, this is kind of bad. And I hope God forgive me for this. But like, I was driving one day on a one lane highway, right? And it wasn't like the, the like the yellow line, it was solid, it wasn't dotted. Dotted means you can go on the other side of the street, on the other side of the road and pass that person that's in front of you, right? Uh, then the solid yellow line means you can't do that, that like, that's illegal. Cause it's like, it's one way traffic. So I'm driving, I'm I'm going the correct speed limit. Um and the but the speed limit at that time was it was like just it was it was slow, right? But I was going I was going the right speed limit. Um and then the person that was behind me was just on my ass, right? So he decided to get over illegal illegally. Um, and then drive on the, on the other side of the road 
and passed me. Well, he did pass me, but like when he drove on the other side of the road, I just sped up and I just, I was just, I just kind of like kept speed with them for like two seconds, right? Cause you got one, you got one way, you got one traffic going this way, and then the other side you got going this way. He's on this side. He passes me, but I drove, I drove and matched his matched his speed for like two seconds. But I just realized, like I didn't just realize that now, but I realized um, when I did it that um, that could have been very, very, very bad because a car could have came at any moment. And he would have had no way of getting over because I was on the, I was matching his speed. And then the road that he was on, the side that he was on, a car could have came and it could have been rats. But I just wanted to teach him a lesson. You just, just like, just be patient. You know what I mean? But I'm thank God nothing happened to him or her. I don't really know. I wasn't paying attention, but like, just be safe. That's all I'm saying. And I'm sorry uh, for doing that. I really am. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. But sometimes teaching somebody, teaching somebody a lesson is just, um, it can, I don't know. It can, um, you're going to have a pros and cons. That's all I'm saying. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family. Oh, <laughs>